Now, if you're anything like me, you're probably creating content in the comfort of your own home, which sometimes doesn't allow for the most amount of space in the world. We all don't have access to big fancy studios that we can go to whenever we want in order to make videos. Now, I have sectioned off a small space in my apartment in order to make videos, but it was a little bit uninspiring and things were a little bit more cumbersome when I wanted to get the shot. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you all the upgrades that I've made to make the perfect space to make content while only using a small space inside of your house. Now, that's not to say I wasn't able to make some really good content using the space that I currently had. The videos that I've been making using the small room in my house with the setup that I had was able to generate a ton of views, but it did have a couple of problems with it. Now, at first glance, this looks like a pretty decent YouTube setup. I mean, you have your light over here. There's a little boom arm that's going to have my Sennheiser MK416. It's just like a little podcast arm. And then I also have a tripod where my Sony FX30 is going to go. This all looks fine and dandy. This is a desk I got on Amazon, but listen to this. That actually sounds terrible. This leg is actually not straight. And no matter how many times I screw it back in, it always comes undone. Another thing is going to be this window. Now, window light is great for natural light, but I don't have south facing windows. This is actually pointing towards the east. So what ends up happening is when the sun rises, right till it gets about noon over here, there's a big sunlight blaring in. And you might notice in some videos, the lighting changes and it looks a little bit weird. And that's exactly why. So I need something to handle this thing. But I have no problem with the microphone arm and the Sennheiser NK416, except every time I move it, if it's not bordered against my light, that's a little bit too high for my liking. So sometimes it doesn't work very well. There's also one more thing, and it's actually gonna be the fact that I need a C-stand and a tripod in order to get my camera to light in here. Now the hard part is, is the distance between the stand and the tripod leaves this extra room between the end of the desk and the wall. So sometimes if I do nudge something over or something falls, what ends up happening is, well, it falls in the crevice in between here. So I need to try to close this distance a little bit just to make my life easier. So I got rid of pretty much everything to make a smaller footprint and to make life easier for myself. And that's all gonna start with getting the proper desk. Now this is a big shout out to FlexiSpot because they did send me one of their standing desk systems, which I actually like quite a bit because of its versatility. Now with the FlexiSpot set, up, you're going to get a set of legs that are there that are expandable because FlexiSpot has a variety of different tabletops that you can get from color and different sizes. You can get whatever size that you want to fit in the space. And at the same time, you don't have to worry about using a new set of legs and you have programmable presets. So if I want to make content sitting down or standing up, you can actually make custom presets for the desk. And then all you have to do is press a button and you're ready to actually start recording content, especially with the different accessories that I use on my desk in order to make sure that I have everything I need without having to change too many things over. Now, I might be sitting down now because I hurt my foot, but when you want to use a standing desk to make content, I find that I'm a little bit more conversational and making videos is a little bit easier to deliver information. Also with a standing desk, you're gonna have better posture. Now as me becoming an old man, although you might not be able to tell, my lower back is starting to kill me, especially when I sit down for longer YouTube videos. So being able to throw in a video in my batch where I'm standing up and delivering information instead of sitting down is actually taking a lot of stress off my hips, which means I'm going to have more longevity. Now FlexiSpot did send me this desk and shout out to them. And if you want to check it out, the link's in the description down below. However, there's a bunch of accessories that are actually on this desk that I find are a little bit more important because you're going to need them to make some content. Now, the first thing we're going to talk about is a multifunctional arm by Ulanzi. Now, what I love about this arm is it has three arms for very distinct functions. Now, the first arm is going to have my camera itself, which is also nice because it has a tripod mount on it as well with a quick release so I could take my camera on, I could put it off. And if I want to go from desk mode to a vlogging mode, it's incredibly easy to do. Now, the camera I'm going to have on this arm is going to be the Sony a7 IV, which I'm recording on right now. Reason being is I do like my full frame camera. I do have a 20 millimeter lens that goes on there as well. And I am going to be using the Freewell K2 system in order to take down some of the overexposure coming from the window. Now I do like to make sure I have the best audio possible. So I am using my Sennheiser MKE 400 as a scratch mic, but we're going to talk about the second arm, which is going to house my MK416 by Sennheiser. Now you still have to use a little rubber spacers that you have to use on the Sony FX3 handle, the FX30 handle, or even the FX6. But the fact that this has an arm for an XLR mounted microphone, Phone, gives you the ability to have high quality sound and at the same time you don't have to attach it to a C stand which was one of the problems I did have the first time. Now the third piece of the multifunctional arm setup is going to have my light and you want to be a little bit more careful with this one. Now I'm using a falconized light panel even though I do have natural light coming from the window. 
That way I do have a little bit more control over my exposure. And also if it's nighttime or if it's raining, I do have a light source to light up my face. Now that's not to say you have to use this exact panel for this setup, but you wanna be a little bit careful with selecting the light that you wanna use for this arm. Now you could use a chip on board or a COB light with a soft box, but what ends up happening is the weight distribution might be a little bit off. I could still get the power that I need and because of its rectangular shape, it doesn't have an awkward weight distribution. Also, don't look at the grid. I, I know, I need a new one. I haven't got a new one yet. If you have an idea of how I can get a new one for this particular model, I'll leave it down on the screen here and just direct me into the right place. I get it, the grid looks like crap. Now this arm does fix two gigantic problems that I had with my old setup. For one, you don't have to worry about having a light on a C-stand, making further distance between the edge of your desk and the window. So if you do have other things on your desk outside of your camera setup, it makes things a lot harder for them to fall off in the space between the distance you gave for your tripod and obviously where the window or the wall is going to be. And the second part is I don't actually have to use a tripod to get my camera on. Now I have pretty long arms and it's pretty easy for me just to press the record button whenever I need to. But when I'm using the Ulanzi system, it's much easier for me just to reach over, press record, and I'm good to go. I don't have to get an extra reach and if you're someone that doesn't have the same wingspan as I do, it might be a little bit difficult for you to do the same thing. Now Ulanzi did send me two different arms for this desk and the next one is going to be one specifically for top down shots. Now this one is pretty simple. It has a quarter 20 thread that's on it. It articulates pretty easily and you could format it into an L shape in order for you to get top down angles. Now this does solve another big problem for at home setups. If you're new to this channel, I do film a lot of top down angles, especially when I'm doing product reviews and showcases. And what I had to do beforehand was move my C stand that used to have my light on it, take the light off, put my camera onto a cage, and then I screw my camera into the C stand, then I have to move my desk all the way. It's, it was just too much work. Now with the Ulanzi arm, I'm gonna be using the Sony FX30 for two particular reasons. One, it does have a down sampled sensor, which means I'm still going to get sharpness and detail and 10 bit color whenever I need to get a top down shot. Now the second thing is actually the design of the Sony FX30 itself. It does have a cageless design. It does have a bunch of quarter 20 threads that are on it, which makes it a lot easier for me to just to mount it on the desk arm so I can get that top down angle. Now the lens I am going to be using with this setup is going to be the 30 millimeter Viltrox lens, which is actually a 20 millimeter equivalent. So if I ever have to interchange this camera on the Sony a7 IV at 20 millimeters, I could use that with the Sony FX30 in order to do that. Now moving on into the audio side of things, I do like using my Zoom H6. Now with my Sennheiser MK416 set up onto the boom arm onto the desk setup already, all I have to do is just plug in an XLR cable and I could sync my audio in post. And lastly is going to be my podcast setup. Now with YouTube introducing podcasts into the platform, I am gonna start doing a lot more podcast style episodes and I want to have a podcast microphone for two different situations. For one, I do use my Sennheiser mic with my Sony FX6 for professional shoots when I'm freelancing. So sometimes I don't always wanna set it up exactly onto this location and I wanna just use a podcast microphone instead. Also, and this might sound a little bit ridiculous, but when you have a podcast mic in a podcast style piece of content, it feels a lot less invasive and a little bit more natural. People view content a little bit different nowadays where they don't actually mind if there's a if there's a microphone in the shot. And when I'm doing things like podcasts, I do like using this externally recording onto my laptop. So I do have those audio clips that I could sync later on. And I actually use this exact system for a video that you've probably already seen on this channel about people switching to the Sony FX6. The microphone I'm going to be using is going to be the Shure M7. It's a lot cheaper than the SM7B, mostly because I wasn't really sure if I was gonna to commit to podcasts. However, it is a very useful tool if you wanna get into that realm of making content. It's also nice that it does have a headphone jack, it does have a USB connection, and you have volume control at the same time. Now in terms of the arm I use for this microphone, I'm just using one by Rode. I don't mess around with their microphones too much, but they make some pretty decent podcast stuff. Now that's everything that's going to go on the desk in terms of my at-home setup, but if you haven't noticed, my skin tones look kind of nice right now. And the reason why is for two reasons. Now when you are working with outdoor daylight or the sun, it's gonna be really hard to actually find lighting to overpower it. The sun is one of the best lighting sources that we have and oftentimes we don't have lights that can overpower it or at least we don't have the money to. Okay, at least I don't have the money to. But what you can do is do something called diffusing the light. So if you do see people that use big five in one reflectors or things that are a little bit more translucent in order to split up the light and create some even tone, that's something that you're also gonna see that's going to be in the setup. Now that's all fine and good, but one thing that a lot of people forget is that the color of the diffusion that comes in is going to be the color that's going to represent on your skin. Now I don't have a big problem with having neutral diffusion that's gonna be on my face. However, I did think about one thing that a lot of cinematographers use. 
Now people use something called unbleached muslin all the time. And what it is, is it's a diffusion cloth, but it does have a little bit of color. It does have a little bit of tone to it. So when you're working with different skin tones, it actually helps bring that out. Now they're not the thickest things in the world. And if I was to use it on its own, if the sun came in really harsh, it would still create harsh shadows on my face. So what I did was I combined both of those at the same time. So what I am using is the five in one diffusion panel that I've always been using, but I put a more unbleached muslin colored curtain right at the front of it to make sure that even though I'm diffusing the light, that double diffusion is also going to complement my skin tones. And there you have it. Those are all the things that I changed for my YouTube setup. And I honestly feel a lot more inspired to create a lot of content. It's a lot easier for me to move the cameras I need to around and create different setups for the shots that I need while still having a very small footprint and working in a small space. Now, if you do want to check out any of the accessories that I talked about in this video, you can check out the links in the description down below. And that actually might bridge the gap between me shooting my house or shooting at a fancy studio because honestly, I do get a little bit of a kickback whenever you guys make a purchase. But that being said, I hope you enjoyed the video or at the very least you guys learned something and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.